Today is the Feast of Divine Mercy, and as we go through the readings, I'd like to suggest that we look how Jesus gave us such peace and, et and eternal love that uh, gave me the privilege to see the original painting in Eastern Europe, and so I would encourage you to think about that as we go through the readings. The challenge and often failure for historians is to interpret the past through the eyes of those who live in the past. So we enter the minds of the disciples in today's gospel who locked the doors and met in secret to discuss their utter confusion over Jesus' death. They thought he would con conquer death, and yet he was killed, and they may be next, so they are frightened. He was so holy and loving, yet now they were alone with him, without him. They didn't understand how he could offer them eternal life if he is dead. They didn't necessarily know he was God, like Doubting Thomas. They didn't understand the Trinity, and even the so-called resurrection only meant that he was still gone forever. Jesus' challenge was to demonstrate to them that he had conquered death and was giving them a glimpse of eternal life he was offering them. Certainly his birth at Christmas and resurrection at Easter were important, but this visitation was profound because it was only then that the disciples came to understand and believe that indeed he did conquer death and offered eternal life. The question is how did Jesus accomplish this as described in today's gospel? To answer this question, let us look at the three notable moments of transcendence between this earthly finite world of the universe and the divine eternal world of heaven. The three moments are the universe's beginning as described by physicists, mystical experiences as described by saints, and near-death experiences as described by patients. Not surprisingly, all of these three moments share common divine attributes as follows. Outside space, and that is out, an out-of-body experience. Outside time, that is a, sen a lack of a sense of cognitive time, an experience of time. Oneness, that is experience of divine unity. And perfect ardor, that is the effective experience of divine peace. Let's examine each of these so that we can see how Jesus demonstrated them in today's gospel. The first and second divine attributes relate to being outside space and time. Neither the earth nor the universe has an edge. The universe has curbed space and time. If we travel one direction, we return to our point, beginning point from the opposite direction. Asking what it is like to be outside the edge of the universe is like asking what it is like to fall off the edge of the earth. Both are nonsensical questions. It is like asking a fish what it is like to swim without water. The fish would have no idea what we were talking about because all it knows is its own universe constrained within the dimension of water. Likewise, we have no concept what it is like to be outside space and time, since all we know is our universe constrained within the dimensions of space and time. Though being outside space and time, the transcendent state Jesus was demonstrating is beyond our complete comprehension. Jesus brilliantly communicated a taste of that eternal divine state without words. He demonstrated being outside space by entering the room through a locked door. He demonstrated being outside time by returning after he was dead. The third divine attribute is oneness in divine unity. Jesus did this probably by offering, palpably by offering Thomas the opportunity to put his hand in his side. 
Jesus brought physical and spiritual unity to Thomas and the community. He offered unity, but like Thomas, we have to accept his offer of unity. The fourth divine attribute, that is peace, is perhaps the most interesting. Jesus repeats three times in today's gospel, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. This is not just the traditional Hebrew greeting shalom, but Jesus' offer of peace that the world does not give, that is living in and with him now and the eternal peace of being with him in heaven. Today's first and second readings describe a later time of how the Christian community had taken to heart the peaceful message of faith in Jesus in today's gospel. The first reading says, with great power the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great favor was accorded them all. The second reading says, who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The disciples realized that Jesus was not dead, but ever present. That when he gave of himself in the Eucharist, he was saying, do this in memory of me, so that we could always have him present with us. When my wife passed away almost five years ago to the day, I grieved once and loud, very loudly shouted out, I lost you. To my surprise, there was this gentle voice in my mind saying, I'm not lost. This is what Jesus is saying to all of us. Every Easter, my family and I go to an Easter brunch to continue the tradition that my wife started. We feel her presence when we do that. So it is when we receive communion. Jesus is saying, I'm still here for you. And my presence is not only in the Eucharist, but in the tradition that I asked you to do in my memory. With full divine mercy, may peace be with us all.